Okay, guys, AP Statistics here. We're going to continue to talk about linear regression. All right, the most important part of linear regression is truly, truly, truly your ability to have the wisdom to analyze and interpret what you're doing and what you're seeing with this data. Hopefully, by now, you understand that you have a scatter plot. So I, 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 kind of, I did this, and I, I wanted to show you, but what I had was... Um, some home prices okay so we looked at a scatter plot and I made this up on my calculator um, and what happened was the X variable was the size of the house the size of the house measured in square feet and that's usually how, how how we talk about the size of a house and we also looked then again against the price of the house measured in dollars okay and here's a rough view of what I saw Okay, so first thing is let's recap that you truly understand how to interpret this graph. Positive, linear, and um, pretty strong, very strong, I would say, for this type. So it's a real simple sentence. The, the graph is, uh, appears, the scatter, plot, the scatter plot appears to be linear, positive, and very strong. And you have to also be able to give that nice sentence of, as the square footage of the house increases, the price of the house in dollars also increases. Very easy sentence to do. Well, I actually went ahead and looked at the data. I found the averages of the um, X's, the size. I found the averages of the prices. I found the standard deviations. I found the standard deviations for both. I found the R value. And I came up with the following equation. Okay, the price predicted my formula, the price predicted, is equal to 62,177.12 plus 29.70 times size. Okay? Um, now, we've talked about in class, I just want to recap, because the most important part is not that you could do all of this, I mean, that's important, but you've got to be able to interpret it. So let's interpret the y-intercept, for example. That y-intercept tells me at a size of zero, the house will cost $62,177.12. So that tells me that a size, a house that has no size to it, will cost $62,000. Does that make sense in context? No, it does not. It does not make sense in context. You need to write that out. A house of zero square footage would cost $62,177.12. And no, in a real world application, it does not make sense. But remember, we talked about sometimes the y-intercept makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. In this particular case, it would not make sense. How about the slope? What does that slope mean? I taught you to write down the slope and put it over top of 1. The 1 is the x, the top is always the y. x is size, measured in square feet. It's important to write all this down so you can interpret it correctly. The y is the price, measured in dollars. So what this tells me is that for every one square foot that the house increases, the price of that house will increase by $29.70. So for every, and that's how you start off with any slope interpretation, for every one square foot of increase in size, so I'm getting a little bit sloppy here. The square, the uh, I'm sorry, the price, the predicted price. I for, almost forgot that. It's something that a lot of kids forget. But you got to remember that the predicted price, because no one's saying this is going to happen. It's just a model. Models are meant for theory or predictions. The predicted price increases by twenty-nine dollars and seventy cents. Guys, I, and I really can't stress enough that if you can't do that interpretation, you're going to fail the entire unit because that interpretation of the slope is so vital to your understanding of what's going on here. Okay. Now, I also want to tell you that I used my calculator and I found an R value of 0.9648, which is very strong, mind you. And I'm sorry, I take that back. I take that back. The R value... I mean, I was kind of right there, but hold on a second here. The R value was 0.9823. So again, very strong. And that gave me an R squared value 
of 0.9648. Now that R squared value, now R tells us, hey, this is linear, it's strong, it's positive. Okay, it's great, but R squared tells us something more important. Remember, R squared is called the coefficient of determination. R is the correlation coefficient. R squared is the coefficient of determination. And it sounds really important, and it is. And it tells me that 96.48% of the variation in price is explained by the variation in size. And that tells me something. Think about what that means. 96.48% of the different prices we saw is actually due to the difference of size. So size matters a lot in the price of a house. How much? I don't want to say that size accounts for 96.48% of the price of a house. Not exactly, but it means that 96.4% of the different prices we see is actually due to or explained by the different sizes we saw. So that tells us there's a strong connection here and that our line is actually very, very appropriate. Our line that goes right through this data is very, very appropriate for this particular set of data. A lower R squared value tells us uh, our line's not too, not too reliable, not too good at making predictions. This strong R squared tells me that we're really good at making predictions. So being able to understand all of those interpretations, Y intercept, slope, and R squared, and then go back to the basic idea and explanation of that scatter plot. All of those things really, really are important and vital to your understanding of what's going on here. Okay? Now, the idea here is on the AP test, they know that sometimes you can mess up in your math. Sometimes you could find the wrong average because you typed a number in wrong, or maybe you did something wrong with the formula. So what they do for you is really good. They give you what's called a computer output. Now, computer outputs come in different forms. They all look slightly different, but for the most part, they have this basic setup. And what happens on the AP test is we give you one of these computer outputs. That way you can get all the information you need from the output without doing any calculations. So notice what happens in this output. The first thing I want to point out is the word constant. Next to the word constant, that's going to be on every computer output. Next to the word constant is your y-intercept. Okay, so when we say constant, we mean the y-intercept, and right next to that is the y-intercept. Underneath that is going to be a word. That word is always your x variable, always. And right next to that word is always going to be the slope. And remember, those are the two things that you need to create a linear regression line. Now, oftentimes they'll also tell you the R squared value. If you ever see something called R squared adjusted or ADJ, just ignore it. It is not something that we need in this class. So they tell you that R squared is 69%. That's not great, but it's not terrible. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about S. S is the standard deviation of the residuals. We'll talk more about that over the course of the next couple class sessions. All this other stuff over here, we're going to save for a rainy day. We will learn about all this later on. This SE stands for standard error, T ratio, P value. We'll learn about all that another day. But let me explain this problem to you. This problem dealt with looking at sandwiches at Burger King, several sandwiches, and we tried to we looked at the fat content of the sandwiches and the protein. And we tried to figure out can protein, the X, predict the fat. So we have fat predicted as the Y variable. And again, the X is always underneath the chord constant, so you should always know who's the X, and that's the guy that's doing the explaining. So X or fat predicted equals 6.83, and I'm going to go to two decimals here. I probably shouldn't be doing that, but I'm doing it just for saving some time of writing here. Plus 0.97 times protein. So let's interpret this. This tells me that Y intercept zero grams of protein would be 6.83 grams of fat. Could that be realistic? Absolutely. A sandwich may have no protein in it, but still have 6.83 grams of fat. So you'd write that out. That makes sense. 
Next is going to be the slope, 0.97 over 1. 1 is the x, the value on top is the y. The x is protein measured in grams. The y is fat measured in grams. So if this tells me that for every 1 gram of protein I have, I increase predicted 0.97 grams of fat. So it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. For every one gram of protein, there's one gram of fat, but it's not quite. One gram of protein predicted to be 0.97 grams of fat increase. So the point of me giving these computer outputs is all the information you need is right here. You don't have to do any work on your own. Also, I can interpret that R squared value. 69.0% of the variation in fat is explained by the variation in protein. So 69% of all the different fats I saw, or grams of fat that I saw in my data, is actually explained or due to the differences of protein that I saw. So protein has a lot to do with fat, not extremely strong, because 69% is not great. In fact, I can use that R squared value of 0.69, and I could square root it to actually find my R value. The square root of 0.69 is 0.83. Now, 0.83 is a strong R value, but it's not in the top notch very, very strong, but it's not bad. You get the idea, though. So, kind of this, these computer outputs are so vital to your understanding because many problems that we're going to do next week on Tuesday and Thursday is we're going to just just you know just hammer you with these computer outputs so you get you looking at them and being able to focus simply on the analysis of regression being able to have some what we call regression wisdom being able to truly look at a regression plot and have wisdom to what it means what it understands slope y intercept r squared all of it is extremely important in your understanding of all this information. All right, so hopefully that will get you ready to get started on what we're going to be covering next week. It is so important that you understand this whole idea of interpreting your information. And then now, instead of you calculating it or even you using the calculator where you still could make a mistake, the, the paper or the problem is going to give you everything you need. You just have to be able to interpret it.